Alrighty, so here we are inside the Airstream. Uh, this, obviously, we're back here in the head. And uh, when I picked it up, this is what I found. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. I hope you can see in there. That was the extent of the 110 volt system. <laughs> Uh, I walked around this trailer about four times like a moron underneath it, around it, looking, trying to find the shore power cord. And uh, I won't bore you with the frustrations involved, but as it turns out, there was a small 110 breaker panel here. And what you see here, these two groups of uh, two groups of two yellow wire nuts, those are the only two. Uh, 110 circuits in the entire trailer. One goes to the uh, air conditioner and the other one lights up all of the receptacles as well as going to the battery charger. Uh, I didn't know what this was until I took it apart because I don't know if you can see real well. This is where the water heater used to be and uh, we'll address that later but there's a piece of galvanized steel attached on the outside that was covering the outside of this uh, box. And when I took it apart in here and took it out of the wall, I found an indicator light on the outside. And I was like, aha, this is the reverse polarity indicator light that the Airstreams have on them. So it looked really good in there, no problems. I just reinstalled it. Now, the frustrating part was I just didn't know any of this when I got started. And it took a full day of uh, messing around so now I've got to uh, I gotta fix this and I gotta make it uh, work good safe and uh, reinstall everything so uh, let me get over here and I'll show you what I got okay well I apologize if the lights a little funky I'm inside the trailer and uh, <laughs> right now I've got that little heater running so uh, I haven't got my drop light hooked up yet this is kinda early morning and it's a mat chilly so we're gonna let the let the coach heat up for a little while before I get started. But this is the breaker box that I bought. And uh, is it overkill for this? Oh yeah, absolutely. But it's polymer, it's light, it's an indoor unit. And I'll just set the cover on there. And you can see what it looks like. There's the access. Because this thing is going to be mounted in a closet. And uh, when I deal with the water heater situation... Uh, I can't have something that gets in the way, and I need something kind of tough. While this technically isn't rated for outdoors, technically this isn't outdoors. So I think this would be a good choice for that. And, uh, you know, it's a four space, so if you're using the half size breakers, you can actually get eight. Now, most RVs and RV parks are limited to 50 amps. And so that's what I've got is a 50 amp uh, main. And a word on this, um, back when these trailers were built, this one's in 1974, they did things in the wiring, especially in the way they wired up the breakers and whatnot, that today, in 2013, would be considered not kosher. Now, it worked forever back then. In fact, you know, there, it's, it's the one thing I hesitate to say because, let me preface this when I am not a professional uh, electrician or a professional plumber, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm just a guy who does stuff. So there's some things I won't show in a video because I don't want you to think it's the right way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this up, and to make a long story short, I'm going to have four 20-amp um, circuits available to me even though they will unlikely ever be used at any one given time. So we'll just leave it at that. Um, I am going to go, as you see the hole I already put in here, because those wires sticking out of the wall are so short, and you would literally have to remove the wall to the, ne to the next uh, fixture on either one to rewire it, I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pigtail those short wires but it'll end up pigtailed in the box so let me go ahead and get this thing all mounted up and we'll show you how it works out okay so 
there's the box. Again, I apologize for the lighting. It's kind of hard to see. Got the neutral on the neutral bus bar. This is the plug. This right here is the cord. And you can see it all over there. And that'll have a plug on the end of it. It'll be a 30 amp right now. And uh, I'll probably upgrade this cord later. But I've got the cord. Got the ground bar. Got the neutral bus bar. The, uh, the power is there. This is one of the little pigtails that uh, I've got to put on that on those short short wires you saw coming out of the wall I'll pigtail them here and secure them real well I left a little bit of the Romex casing here taped both ends and then let me see if I can do this well it'll come up through the hole in the box and I'll wire it that will keep all of the connections inside the box this box will be flush mounted and uh, then I'll be able to go ahead and just hook everything up the way you normally would. But now I gotta mount the box. Well, there it is. Sorry about the flashlight action. I uh, just dropped my trouble light. But uh, there's the load center, and there's where the cord's going. I haven't finished running the cord. The uh, is it big for this unit? Yeah, yeah. The uh, Half the breakers aren't used right now, but uh, there's things coming up. So, tested, working, and uh, now we can move on to the next system. Electrical is all good. All right, y'all. <laughs> Let me turn the flashlight off. Fair winds. Thanks for stopping by.